Welcome to Today Matters, a short devotional in the Word of God. My name is Tim Neisler. I'm one of the pastors here at Skyline Church. If you've been with us this week, you know that we've been going through 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and the story of King Jehoshaphat. It's a beautiful picture of a framework of how we should respond when we're going through issues in our life and how God can show up. And so I created this framework based on what King Jehoshaphat went through. And so let me break it down for you. Number one, there's a dilemma, right? The dilemma is that King Jehoshaphat got word that there was an army coming to get him and his people. Next, King Jehoshaphat's reaction was to call a fast in all the land. He gathered all of his people together in the temple or the church And they began praying. They began seeking the Lord. Number three in the framework is God's response to that reaction. It shows that God's response to that action was to send a prophet in the midst of that assembly to stand him up and speak this incredible word of prophecy saying the battle is not yours, but God's, right? And then number four in that framework is Jehoshaphat believing God for what the prophet had said. So he had this faith to believe everything that he said. He, they had so much faith that they sent the worship team out in front of the army to meet these guys who were coming to kill everybody. It's incredible to think about it. And when we wrap our minds around it, it doesn't make sense. And sometimes faith is like that. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense but we never give up on what we believe God is going to do. Let's dive back into the word of God in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, starting in verse 22. And this is when the the, the leaders with Jehoshaphat sent the worship team in front to meet those people who were going to fight them. At the very moment, they begin to sing and give praise. The Lord caused the armies of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir to start fighting amongst themselves. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and killed every one of them. After they had destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. So when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the wilderness, All they saw were dead bodies lying on the ground as far as they could see. Not a single one of them had escaped. The rest of the story goes on to talk about how much plunder they had found. They had shields and weapons and all kinds of cat, all this stuff that they gathered because everybody had died, right? So that is the final God's moving. That's God's victory in this framework, right? And so, yeah, it's pretty simple to see this framework from the word of God, but let me give you a silly example of what it could look like in my own life. I'm gonna share uh, seven years ago. uh, You know, I I didn't get married till I was 45 years old, and, uh, you know, I had been praying for a long time, but the, the problem is, my dilemma is that I was born with this huge head, okay? I'm not proud of it, but it's just the way that God made me. And my reaction to that dilemma was saying, God, I know, I know what's on my heart. I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe by faith that I don't have the gift of singleness. That was my reaction. And then God's response was, he introduced me to this beautiful Puerto Rican princess by the name of Jolie Beck through a series of dates and getting to know her. It took a while to convince her she was in love with me, but finally she submitted. You know why? Because I had enough faith to believe that God was gonna give me that desire of my heart. And God's victory was that in 2016, we were married, and not long after that, we started having kids, and we have two beautiful kids. That's a silly version of the framework right? But seriously, you can apply this framework to anything that you're going through. Again, let me just close it up so you completely understand. We have a dilemma. Everybody does. I mentioned it in one of the other videos that if there's one thing we all have in common is that we're going through something. We all have a dilemma. And so what is going to be our reaction to that dilemma? 
And we learn from the Bible that we should always seek God first, not second. Don't take matters into our own hands, but we seek God's first. And then God's response to that reaction, right? We can read the word of God. We can have someone that we know and love who loves Jesus speak into our lives. And if it, if it finds a place in our heart, then we can hold on to that, right? But then number four is having the faith to believe that God is not going to forget about us. And I believe that it, once we get that response from God and we have enough faith to wait, it's only going to be a matter of time before God shows up in that situation. And ultimately, number five, God will get the victory. My prayer is that this blessed you and that you'll be able to actually apply this framework to your life. And if you do that, I'd love to see some comments. Tell me all about it in the comment section. Thank you so much for spending your week with me. Mm-hmm.